people of the internet, my name is Johnny, and even though the FNAF 10th anniversary week is over, that doesn't mean I gotta stop farming it. I saw Respawn do a video ranking all of the releases and projects we got for the FNAF 10th anniversary event. So I figured I'd throw my hat in the ring because I streamed pretty much every single day, every single launch we got for the event. So in today's video, I'm gonna be going through everything we got released during that week and ranking from peak to really good to fun to disappointing what I thought about all of those releases. Before the event actually happened, I did my own personal ranking on what I was most excited for. At the very top, we had FNAF Into the Pit. In the second tier, we had Five Laps at Freddy's by Click Team, as well as T-Jock. Peak, but has the chance to be Mad Sleepers, was the collab announcement, the Steel Wool announcement, as well as the FNAF 2 reveals. And then lastly, looking forward to it, we have the VIP novel, the Scott interview, as well as My Pop Goes. Now, you may notice with all of those rankings, both before the event as well as after the event right here, none of them are super negative. That's because, just honest to god, I really did enjoy everything we got out of the 10th anniversary event. There's really nothing I would change, I'm not really disappointed, well... <laughs> We'll get there. But overall, I really did enjoy everything we got. It was a spectacular event. I really don't have many negatives to say. So now let's just start going through in order all eight of the days as well as the FNAF 2 movie images we got. So first up for day one, we have My Pop Goes, a spinoff title in the Fazbear Fanverse initiative. In April of last year, we got the free version of My Pop Goes, but for the anniversary event, they released a fully fledged paid for version of the game that had brand new mini games, brand new modes, challenges, brand new lore, as well as a whole bunch of different endings. One of which even gave us the unwithered animatronics for the first time in the franchise. I'm not going to beat around the bush too much. I did have a lot of fun with my pop goes. I wouldn't quite say it's really good only because of just how infuriating some of the challenges were. It's really my own doing. I spent hours upon hours on multiple of the challenges just because they were so damn difficult. The main gameplay of my pop goes, well, fun, is certainly very stressful and you get pretty bored of it quite easily. Personally, I was able to really rush through the main campaign mode and of course you do have the mini games and other challenges to spice up the gameplay, but like I said, those can be extremely frustrating to deal with. It's a game I did enjoy. I had a lot of fun with it. I'm super grateful that Kane Carter, the creator of Pop Goes, was on the My Pop Goes stream. But with how frustrating some of the challenges were, it really did bring my enjoyment of the game down because I was just grinding my way, or at least trying to grind my way through the challenges that were just incredibly, incredibly difficult. But moving on now to day two, we have the Joy of Creation demo by Nixon. Now, while it was only a demo of the full game, which is set to launch for about $20 next year, honestly, I find this to be one of the best things we got out of the entire anniversary event, and again, it's only a demo. If you saw anyone's video on the t jock demo, like the first thing they say in the video was, t jock was always one of my favorite fan games, it was always the most unique and terrifying, and the remake really just takes all all of those factors and cranks it up to 11. You can really see just how better at game design Nixon has got throughout the years and especially the fact that this game is made in Unreal Engine 5. The game just looks absolutely incredible visually with the graphics, with the animations, with all of the designs of the characters and the settings. I was able to bug it out a few times but it is only a demo so I can excuse that. And I'm also not a massive fan of having to die to get a tip on how to actually play the video game but also when you do die you're treated to one of the best jump scares FNAF has ever offered, official or fan-made. The game also has a perfect difficulty curve, in my opinion. The mechanics blend together just so well. And it's also just such a treat to have, like, Chica come out of the ceiling and be, like, panicking for a few minutes. What do I do with Chica? But then remember years back to the original Joy of Creation story mode? Oh, I should find her cupcakes. They're probably in the drawers, you know? Like, it's, it's just so fun. It's nostalgic, but it's such a brand new, you know, fresh coat of paint. I'm not sure I used that phrase correctly but I think you get what I'm saying. Like, T-Jock is really just so, so fantastic, really. And again, it's only a demo. This was only the office level. There are so many other levels in the full game. I really cannot wait for the full version. For day three, we have the VIP interactive novel written by E.C. Myers. I've admitted this in the past. I've not been keeping up to date at all with the brand new Five Nights at Freddy's books. I read the original trilogy. I read like some of the spin-off books like the Survival Logbook and the Freddy Files. But when Fazbear Frights came out around 2019, I did read Into the Pit the first book. But after that, I just 
did not keep up with what they were releasing. Same thing with the Tales books. I've not read a single Tales from the Pizzaplex story, so I am significantly behind in the literature aspect of the franchise. But when I heard that we were getting interactive stories in the form of choose your own adventure books, I was beyond excited. And with VIP here being the introductory, like, volume zero in the brand new novel series, I am incredibly excited to say I had a lot of fun with it. It might be really good, but because I read it on stream for hours on end and my voice was killing me by the end of it, I have to bump it down to fun just because it was such a slog to get through on stream. I'm sure if I read it on my own time, in my own head, with my own thoughts and my own voices, you know, going through it by myself, I'd probably bump it up to really good, but because... I had that stream aspect of it where I had to read it out loud. It definitely got pretty repetitive. It was going on for a long time. There were just so many different paths to take, which on one hand is really, really fun and enjoyable and adds a lot of replay value. But on the other hand, when I was streaming and we got to another fork in the path, I was like, oh great. <laughs> another place I got to go back to and read even more of. So I'm sure if I enjoyed it on my own time, I'd like it a lot more, but maybe streaming it was not the brightest idea because I had to read it out loud. But even then, going through the story, finding little Easter eggs and references to other things, and the chat would freak out about those, and I had everyone in the chat do a poll on which path we should take. That was super fun, so I did have a lot of fun with the book, but yeah, reading it all out loud, probably a bad idea. It definitely has me really looking forward to what else the interactive novel series has in store. E.C. Myers does return for the week before the first volume in the novel series. But now moving on to the Scott Cawthon interview with Daco. It has been so, so long since we last had an interview with Scott. It was all the way back in 2018 with the UCN challenge, and we literally have not had an interview with the man since. He did no, like, press interviews for the movie, which I thought was pretty disappointing, but here we are, FNAF 10th anniversary, brand new Scott interview, what is he gonna reveal? I was not expecting much. In my original ranking, I ranked this at like the lowest tier, because I thought he was just gonna do some more behind the scenes on some of the games, maybe some behind the scenes on the movie, wasn't really gonna tease anything of interest. But no, the interview came out and it was an absolute treat. While it is 30 minutes shorter than the original interview, which I do think probably hindered it, FNAF has gotten so big with so many people working on the franchise and with how infrequently we get a Scott Cawthon interview, I do think we should take our time with it, make the most out of the run length, but whatever. But what we did get in that hour long interview was really, really good. Like I said, I was not expecting much with this interview, but damn, did Scott tease a lot. From the second FNAF movie to possibly a TV series with Fazbear Frights, brand new games with Mega Cat Studios as well as Steel Wool, some really fascinating behind the scenes on the writing of the Fazbear Fright stories as well as the development of Security Breach, which I was not expecting him to get into, to teasing maybe FNAF World 2? Oh my god, it was a fantastic interview. So if it ran just a bit longer, I feel like it probably would be peak, but I'm still super, super happy with what we got in the interview. Daco did such a fantastic job with the questions. And now we move on to Dead by Daylight, the big FNAF collaboration announcement that I was not at all expecting. If you were online that day, you'll know the absolute whiplash the entire community had from just getting teased and baited left and right from different accounts to Cloak to even the Scott Games Twitter account themselves, tweeting out such a vague, make sure to stay on the lookout on someone's account. Yeah, of course, every brand and company out there was gonna take advantage of something like that. But finally that evening, the Dead by Daylight collab was revealed, but it is not until summer 2025. I was really expecting whatever this collab was gonna be, have it be released like, maybe later on in the month, maybe at the end of the year, but summer 2025, midway next year? Come on! As much as I want to let you cook with this collab, because so many people have been waiting years for this, I mean, summer 2025 is so far away, man. Much like the books, I've admitted I've not played much of Dead by Daylight. I probably have a couple hours on the game, really. I'm not the best at the game. I do enjoy playing the game a lot when I played it with friends. I definitely will be checking out the FNAF collab when it releases. I think if I played a bit more of Dead by Daylight and the collab was a bit closer, it would almost definitely be in peak. But because of those two factors, I'm gonna bump it down to just really good. I know for a lot of people, this would be a peak announcement. And like I just said, if I played a bit more Dead by Daylight, if it was a bit sooner, it would absolutely go in that ranking for me. But for now, I'm gonna put it in really good. I have a long time to practice my Dead by Daylight skill. So when the collab actually does release, hopefully I'm godlike at the game. But now we move on to the secret of the mimic. This was Steel Wool's announcement. I was absolutely expecting Help Wanted 2 DLC, but it turns out we got a brand 
brand new game. There's really not much to go off of with this announcement. There's really not much to go off of with the teaser trailer. It's not set to be released until 2025 as well. And quite frankly, I've learned with these Steel Wolf projects when they say it's releasing next year, it's most likely going to be late next year. And with how little we know about the title, I'd assume that late 2025 release date that I'm predicting is probably mostly correct. I'm really not a Mimic hater. I wouldn't say I'm like a massive fan of the Mimic. Overall, I'm just pretty neutral on the guy. I think he's a cool character. He's a cool concept. He definitely could be used for a lot of very interesting, you know, plot lines and, and concepts and in future installments. So I really hope we get that with this game because it's titled Secret of the Mimic. If he only shows up for like a three minute chase again in this game, I will be rightfully pissed. But I am very excited to learn more about the Mimic. It seems like it's set during the 1970s. So I'm very intrigued to see how that's going to go. I have a lot of high expectations expectations for this game and I really really hope they're fulfilled so while the announcement itself is just a little okay we gotta wait for more news on it but okay for me I'm gonna put it in really good because while I am excited I'm super intrigued there's just not a whole lot to go off of right now most of the you know excitement is just pure speculation on our part like is this the Fall Fest game is this the Carnival game is this the Fazbear Entertainment Origin game that they've been teasing you know like what exactly does this game have in store I'm very intrigued which is why I think this is a really good announcement but I'm also slightly worried that I'm setting my expectations a bit too high but we're just gonna have to wait and see like I said I was expecting a Hope 1 and 2 announcement so the announcement of a brand new game really good in my opinion but speaking of setting my expectations a bit too high maybe it's about time we fill out this disappointing tier five laps at Freddy's man I've been dying for a kart racer based on FNAF for years now so when five laps finally got announced by click team I was super super pumped man and don't get me wrong I am still extremely extremely pumped I think I enjoyed this demo a lot more than the majority of the fan base and I'm still very excited for the full game it's not set to launch until 2025 next year so they got a long time to work on the title and quite frankly I would love if they pushed back that 2025 release date because I mean you've probably seen the discourse this demo was more like a tech demo and an alpha a beta of the game than a fully fledged demo of course it's easy to say now after it's been released oh they just shouldn't have released this because it gives them a, you know gives fans a bad idea for what the final game is going to be like but like I said I Enjoy the demo I think a lot more than other people did I can see where click teams going I can see the idea they have and it's like it's right there man they just gotta go for it which is why I do hope the game gets delayed from that 2025 release date because I think quite frankly I think they need a bit more than just one more year to develop this game since I last played it they did release a patch which fixed a lot of bugs fixed a lot of UI stuff which is fantastic I'm just a bit worried that their idea for five laps is just beyond what they're capable of handling. The controls are quite janky. The items are very confusing on what most of them do to me personally. There were several times when my opponents were just 10 meters behind me and then they jumped to 500 meters behind me. Or Chico was like right in front of me and then all of a sudden boosted 500 meters in front of me. And I'm like, what? what's up with the AI here? They got caught on so many obstacles as well. You'd get flung across the map. Oh my God, you could like, go you could drive on the walls you can clip out of the out of the race to get stuck in an endless respawn loop i feel like you've all seen the clips do i need to continue <laughs> like very clearly this is a early demo very early demo and i'm extremely worried that with the release of this demo it's gonna taint people's idea of what the final product is gonna look like and they're not even gonna want to give it a shot because of how terrible the demo was i'm sorry it was a buggy mess and the fact that they're just not planning on adding online multiplayer how the heck respectfully are you gonna make a kart racing game and not have online multiplayer <laughs> i get it's not required like very easily you can have a lot of fun just kart racing around by yourself but i feel like it's pretty damn expected it's also just where most of the fun of a kart racer comes from playing online with friends to my current understanding they're working on local four player split screen i pray that they have online set for release because i honestly just being honest here, cannot see this game lasting too long if it doesn't launch with online. There's set to be like 16 tracks, which is fantastic. A perfect amount of tracks for a kart racer game. 12 characters uh, with a, you know, franchise as big as FNAF and with how many characters FNAF has is a little underwhelming. So I do hope they broaden the, the roster in terms of either free updates or DLC, whatever. Overall, what I'm trying to get at here, five laps is a good idea. I'm just a little worried 
where it's at right now. I'm not sure how much of this ranting I'm gonna leave in, but this just goes to show how passionate I am about five laps. Like I said, I've been wanting a FNAF Kart Racer for years, man. So the fact that it's finally here and it's on its way, I want it to be the best it can be, and I think Click Team does as well, which is why I really do think it's in their best interest to delay the 2025 release date, work on the game a bit more. I really hope this is not coming off as rude, because like I said, I enjoyed the demo a lot more than other people did. I freaking love this thing, and I want it to be good, and Click Team, I love you guys, I love the work you're doing, but I want you to take your time with this. But anyways, let's move on now from the bottom tier, right back up to the top, baby! Do I really have to explain myself? Into the Pit is a fantastic FNAF game, easily in my top three FNAF games of all time. Right now, it might be my favorite, but that might also be recency bias, but I really do not think I've played a FNAF game on launch for so long. I already have like 20 hours on the game, and I just want to keep booting back into it. I love Into the Pit! The art style, the graphics, the animations are fantastic. The game is genuinely terrifying. The settings and characters are actually super in-depth. The lore, while simply just being an adaptation of a book, is done extremely, extremely well. The secrets and the reveals and the endings are some of the most fun I've had getting in a FNAF game in a long freaking time. I love Into the Pit, and I love Mega Cat Studios. You can tell that they built this game with passion for the fans as fans themselves. I hope, and I really do truly believe, Mega Cat is going to be a brand new staple developer in the FNAF franchise, much like Steel Wool Studios. With Scott talking about a fetch game from them, as well as spoilers, some teases of a fetch game in Into the Pit itself, this is not the last, or at least I pray to Foxy above, this is not the last we'll see of Mega Cat with FNAF because, dude, they just knocked it out of the park. I mean, what else can I say? I have had and continue to have such a blast with this game. All of the challenges you can do, even playing through it like I've done probably 10 times at this point, I am not tired of it. I just want to keep going. It's so fun. It's so creepy. The art style is so incredible. Mega Cat is just so, so talented, and this game is just such a love letter to FNAF, the fans, the books, the games, really everything. And even though it's a book video game, and I know a lot of people probably wanted something else for a new game for the 10th anniversary. In my mind, this is the perfect 10th anniversary game. You can tell it took a lot of time to make this title, but damn, can you appreciate just every single aspect in this game. Every little detail that took time, you can just really appreciate, and it really shines in the final product. But yeah, man, Into the Pit, such a fantastic game. Really, what else can I say? I can gush about this game forever, man. I, this game is peak. Full peak. And now, even though it didn't have a specific day, the FNAF 2 movie did get a lot of news around the FNAF 10th anniversary, so I'm gonna include it in this list. If they release, like, just this photo alone, it's already peak, but because they release so many photos of so many characters and they look so freaking good, yeah, of course it's gonna be peak. I was just thinking we were gonna get, like, maybe some cast reveals for the movie, which, while still exciting, definitely would have been a bit on the tamer side in terms of news. But the fact that they showed, like, every single goddamn animatronic, all the toys, all the withers, and the withers are game accurate, and the toys look spot on. Everything looks like they've been pulled right out of the game. It is no surprise why this is a peak tier. It is no surprise why I am so unbelievably excited for the FNAF 2 movie. I've already done a whole video gushing about all the FNAF 2 movie images, so I'm not gonna do it all here, but you've seen the images, you've seen how accurate and incredible they look already. It, like, is it a surprise why I find them all peak? But that is gonna do it for my ranking of all of the FNAF 10th anniversary releases. Like I said, I really didn't hate anything we got. I really, really enjoyed everything. It's really crazy just how this 10th anniversary touched upon, like, every aspect of the franchise. From the games, to the movies, to the fanverse, to the books, to, like, cross-media collaborations. Like, I really hope this opens the door for future collabs as well. I had an absolute blast. I really enjoyed streaming, like, almost every single day for this week. It really just brought the whole community together. It was so, so fun to get excited with everyone. And there is just so, so much to look forward to on the horizon. Some stuff we haven't even seen teased yet. The future of FNAF could not be brighter. This was a fantastic, fantastic week. And like I said, 
there's just so much more coming. So once again, I'd love to know in the comments, what are your personal rankings for everything we got for the FNAF 10th anniversary? Let me know your thoughts on my ranking. Don't go too hard on me, but do you agree? Do you disagree? That's going to do it for this FNAF video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.